Hey there, welcome back. I have a fun video today. I haven't done a lot of fun ones to me recently, so I need to get back in that. We are doing a modern fertility, fertility lab at home test. I've already done it and I have the results and I'm going to take you through those results because I wanted to give you, I'm not even doing a, this is the first time seeing it on camera. I did my research because that's something that you kind of want to do research before, you know, filming first reactions, especially not really knowing much about the hormone levels and what they mean. And if I were to get bad results, do I really want to get that right on camera? No. Uh, so I didn't. Anyways, so we're going to go and dive in. I'm going to take you through step by step the first process, which was this came in the mail, this little box, and how that worked. So... Uh, when you're testing your fertility, you actually, with at least this company, so don't quote me on other ones, you have to do it on the third day of your period. And that's like the third day of your full flow. I don't know how this timed up correctly because I got the box on day two of my full flow. And I have a regular period. So when you have a regular period, you have to obviously have more of a waiting game so had this came like even a day later because you have to taste test at the morning of day three um i would have had to wait in like a month and a half from the time i got it to end up actually using it so best timing that could have ever happened so on day three the morning of your period you have to take and the right thing in the morning first when you wake up you have to do a blood prick test if it's a little like You'll see it in the video, but it's a little like uh, plastic thing and you just have to like press it onto your finger and it will prick it and blood will come out. So um, I am not afraid of blood. I'm not afraid. Well, I want to say I'm not afraid of needles. I'm not afraid of needles. I don't like looking at it and I appreciate the apple heater. You can't actually see the needle. So it was easy. You have between one and a two to three like cards that you have to fill. I want to say two might be the max um, amount of cards that they make you do. Mine had two in it so they wanted me to fill up two cards worth of blood. It's not as much as it seems. I'm actually a really good bleeder as it turns out because I didn't have any issues whatsoever getting the blood flow going. If anything it was a little hard to get it to stop but and I did. I managed. <laughs> there was a video and I watched it beforehand of how to do it because I've never done this myself and I was a little nervous so I did watch the video ahead. It was very much spot on with like how it ended up working and it gave tips on like if you don't bleed well how to get it to and um you might have to do two pricks. I only had to do one. This is a idea of what it's like that you want to get this amount a blood right here you don't want to get it too over full and you definitely don't want to get it underfilled um, because that means your results won't be accurate it came with the collection cards they called the lancets so I had three of them in the kit I only had to use one um, bandages alcohol pads gauze dressing um, and then it came with all the stuff to return it which was the blood sample bag the biodisposable bag that you put that in and then the prepaid envelope so very much easy to do um, you will be a little nerve-wracking doing it if you've never done it before. I know I was. And then once you do the sample, you actually have to send it back in that day. Uh, because there is, you're dealing with blood. There are some time limits on it that the lab needs it by. So I went and shipped it, uh, like four hours later. So how to test, you have to prepare the test. Um, that means you have to write your name on it, the day, the month, on the card itself. Um, you're supposed to wash your hands with warm water and dry completely and then clean your fingertip with the alcohol pad. Step two is to actually prick your finger. So that part was really easy. You just had to take the cap off the lancet and put it on your finger and then apply pressure and it did the work for me. It just clicked and stabbed me in just a little tiny prick. So the blood has to collect past the first line for them to analyze your sample but you can't go too far either um, which was my fear because I had a lot of blood. And then you're supposed to, after you're done with all the blood, let it dry. And you're supposed to do that for at least an hour or as long as it takes for it to dry. And then put the blood sample in the return bag and in the bio bag and then ship it off. So 
So I sent my results in to the lab, and that is in San Francisco. Uh, a little background, and though the lab, not the lab, the test itself is uh, $159, they do run promos every here and then. I know like this week, as in when I'm filming, there is a 10% off code because this past week was Infertility Awareness Week. Um, speaking of, so like the reason I'm even doing this kit, it's not because I'm trying to get pregnant and it's not because I think I'm infertile. Honestly, what it comes down to is I, well, I'm 31 now and up until I am, I mean, honestly, like meeting my current boyfriend, I didn't even know if I wanted to have kids. So like my fertility really didn't matter to me. Like, could I have kids? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really, I don't know if care is a word. I think, I mean, I think that is where I just didn't really care because I, up until even 28, was pretty much like, I'm not having kids. And then 28, I was like, I maybe like if I meet the right person or like I'll adopt one because I love, even once I started working in my like profession as a counselor, I, I love like my high school kids. Like I would take them home. That's not legal, but well, I mean, I guess it, it could be legal at some point if I did foster care or something, but uh, I can't just take kids home and against their parents' permission. <laughs> so I, when I started counseling, I was like, maybe I want to adopt like an older kid or something. Um, but like knew like, because I'd never met my person that that could always change. And my current boyfriend really wants kids someday. And Honestly, like that's never really scared me because I feel like with him, like I would want to have kids too. Still not right this second, but someday, like maybe in the next couple years, maybe, or maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I see where life takes me first, but I'm in my 30s and every literature piece out there on like ads and anything else, uh, I feel like is meant to scare me about being able to have kids at this age, even though I, I feel young still. Like I never, I love you young moms out there, but that was never for me. Like I cannot picture, I am way too selfish to have a child. And Brittany in her 20s would not, I don't wanna say wouldn't have been a good mom, but I really don't think I would have been a good mom then. Uh, I feel like I would have been a little disappointed missing out on some things. Um, and I'm still in that, like, I'm too selfish, like, with my routine and, like, I have things I still want to do and, like, my schedule. Because you have to change your schedule and make adjustments and I'm still not there yet. And obviously, uh, we aren't trying for a kid. I want to make that clear because I know, like, doing a fertility treatment is a little odd. Um, but I just wanted to see where my body's at. I do have a regular periods. I get them maybe once every month and a half. Um, when I turned 30, literally that month, up until then, maybe I would get a couple periods a year. Like, I would never know when they were. And, like, from 13 to 20-something, like, I'd have one, two six periods a year when I turned 30 my periods became irregularly regular so what that means is every month and a half I have one and I've never been on like a cycle like that where that happens granted it like varies within a couple of weeks but for the most part between like a 35 and 40 something day cycle and I have very long periods they're like 9 to 11 days long um and I know that's not like super normal and there are some issues that could cause that so I was like why not do a fertility test and just see where I'm at uh, and maybe see what like I can fix in the future so that's the background of why I'm doing this uh, I reached out to them like I saw a bunch of ads on modern fertility and like at their looking at the website it's very much like laid out one it's aesthetically pleasing but two it just made sense to me like everything that they wrote out was very much like layman's terms and I understood it and I really appreciated that and I was gonna buy it myself um but they had a little link at the bottom of the website that said it was like an like an influencer reach out thing so I reached out to them I am not getting paid for this video whatsoever I'm giving you very much my honest opinions um but I did get it sent for free so I'm gonna be very transparent with that I did not pay the $159 but I definitely would have had they rejected me which I was very much thinking they were going to do because 
I, I know, I'm just, I'm me. So anyways, the lab literally got the results and like two days later, I got my results. So this is a very fast paced approach to this. I was not expecting within the same week to get uh, all of my levels, but they did it and I'm very pleased and we are gonna go through the results together. Again, I have done this already. I've been through my results. We're not gonna find out anything that I didn't already know. Uh, so my results, I am looking at the hormone levels all together. So I'm very like normal in every area except for one. So my uh, AMH is normal, my FSH is normal, my TSH is normal, but like it's high. So in that area, they said if you're over the just like two point something and you want to get pregnant, you're gonna try to have to get that down to that 2.8 so I have a 4.93 so it is normal but that could be something that I would need to get down if I want to try someday and they're still at that result um my e2 is normal my lh is normal my prl is high so uh I automatically looked into what all the those terms meant because all of that looks like gibberish to me right nothing I am not a scientist I didn't know what that meant so you can click through all of these and they will tell you exactly what they are. So just to give you an example, AMH, it's a hormone produced by the follicles and your ovaries that surround each egg. Um, TSH is a hormone produced in the brain that signals to the thyroid to produce other hormones like FT4. So they give you just on this page, this is a very general overview, uh, just the results saying normal or abnormal. Oh, well, they'll say high or low. So my PRL is the one I'll go into detail most with because that's the only one where it was abnormal for the best word, I guess, for it. <laughs> um, so PRL, which again, I don't know what that is, is a hormone that stimulates milk production and pauses ovulation while you are breastfeeding. So I went into further de detail because I'm like, well, I'm not breastfeeding and I'm, you know, uh, not pregnant and I didn't just have a kid so why is that high uh and then scrolling down further it goes into the summary so it talks about your ovarian reserve and mine again is very much like you have the average number of eggs for your age that honestly made me feel the best because I was that was what I was most nervous for is that I wouldn't have uh a lot of eggs just because my periods are weird I didn't know what I was gonna find you know what I mean and reaching menopause I think I'll reach around 51 I'm fine with that um if I did IVF treatment they think they'd find an average number of eggs again average is good I am great I am in general I feel pretty average and a lot of things so this is this is wonderful news for me so blah 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 normal normal fsh is normal e2 is normal and then it goes into ovulation and talks about what that is and it says my ovulation nothing is out of the ordinary and that's where then we get into uh more details about prl so this says it could be because I tested in the morning some medications or eating before the test could do that. Now I didn't eat before the test and I'm not on any medicine so I knew that wasn't necessarily why but also um, you click on the button and it goes into what normal is. So normal for that is between 5 and 26, 28 and I have a 32 and that made me feel like, so the normal range, I wasn't that far off. You know, I'm moderately high. <laughs> um, and it didn't give me much more info than that because that's on the next page. And then it goes into general wellness and um, how imbalances can affect conceiving and saying uh, for me, like with my TSH because it was, while it was normal, it was high. I said a follow-up with your doctor is recommended before trying to conceive. Um, if TSH levels are above 2.5, they may need monitored um, or treated before pregnancy. 
that's fine i'm not in the process of conceiving so i really don't feel like i need to check up on that at the moment uh, because honestly like this test like you can do it yearly and see how you can do it more than yearly but for someone that's not trying to conceive like it doesn't make sense for me to do that i probably won't do it again until like maybe a couple months before i'm actually going to try and so from there it says let's go to your insights yes please okay so it goes into ovarian reserve thyroid health egg freezing and ivf ovulation menopause um pcos like there's a bunch of literature on this site about everything so all the test results mine was again i can't say the word normal enough so the only one um i was super interested in in this moment is the prl but literally everything and more is on this to go into detail with how my results matched up to someone that might want to get pregnant so i'm clicking on prl because i'm more concerned about that than anything else so here it says talk to your doctor about this result and it says she so she can help me map out a clear plan i kind of enjoyed um that part of it so like this whole thing is female centered and uh, supported like all the doctors on here I actually did there was one male doctor um, but it's very much like pro females on here whereas normal sites would say um, he will go over the results I'm a little surprised I didn't go more general neutral like they or them uh, again not a big uh, I, not that I couldn't care but you know what I mean so it says that um, sleeping like getting poor sleep and not and having bad exercise habits or over exercising can spike it and i would say i'm more so on the over exercising but honestly like i have been letting myself be more relaxed lately where i don't spend hours and hours at the gym anymore like i'll go for an hour and that's all i need like i just honestly like i'm happy where i'm at weight wise and health wise like i feel healthy so I'm not trying to over, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not trying, like, yeah, I would love a bigger butt and everything, but I'm not going to spend hours squatting at the gym, you know? So I don't think that's, it, it could be though. And then I never get a great um, nights of sleep. So th that could be why it's high. So this says, uh, my body might not be getting the go ahead to ovulate normally or that the uterine lining may not be as well prepared as it could be for embryo to successfully implant. So this is something where if I was trying and I wasn't getting pregnant, that could be why. Um, this says you, I could have a, PRL, a high PRL because um, I'm pregnant and I didn't know it. And uh, while I definitely did not think that was possible because, you know, I just had my period, I still tested just to make sure and I am not. So don't worry, that is not the reason. Um, it said being stressed also can cause it to be high and of course I'm stressed it is the end of the year and all of my seniors are graduating and there's just like crazy amount of work with scheduling and doing scholarships and award ceremonies and just in general people's anxiety being so high right now that they're just flocking to my office so yes I am very stressed so that easily could be <laughs> um also painkillers antidepressants um brain cysts that <laughs> yes so i went into more detail and i will go into this in a second so there were a lot of things that could cause it um and then it goes into what it is and it's a hormone released by your pituitary can i say the pituitary gland that stimulates milk production and pauses ovulation after having a baby which helps prevent you from getting pregnant while nursing so this is very much a pregnancy centered hormone so i really shouldn't be high in it but there are reasons why and then it goes into the science of it which you know i'm very much i want to know research i want to know more of it it gives like background on that but what i love is you keep scrolling on that and there is a references and source section and that little baby has all of the articles that they pulled this information off of so like if you were writing a research paper you would have to cite things that's the citation area so i went into that and did some more research and then i did more research because i still like again i'm not a doctor i'm not a nurse i don't have any medical experience i needed more information so basically what i learned is that um could be nothing could be something 
<laughs> it might affect me getting pregnant. It might not. You know, you just really what it came down to is make another point with your doctor and see if it's something that needs looked into because while I was doing the research, I did see the this could be why if you have like a high PRL, which is prolactin, which is hyperprolactin, this is literally coming from my brain, so I might even be saying it correctly. Um, all the symptoms you would have, and I had a lot of those symptoms, specifically um, ones that drove me or drive me crazy, like acne and uh, excessive facial hair. Yeah, I do have that, and but just body hair in general. I do grow body hair. I do shave my face. You know, I feel like that's. An, I don't think it's normal. I do get like a weird little beard that grows in. So, and I've done laser hair removal and that does not get rid of it. So there were things where I was like, oh, well, like maybe if I schedule an appointment with my doctor and there's treatment that you can get because it did say you can, there's medicine if it is a brain tumor, which very much it says most, almost all of them are benign. Um, there's treatment for that too. You can take medicine that could shrink it if that's even what it is. That's like worse. I feel like that's worst case, right? Is a brain, a brain tumor's worst case? Um, best case is that there's medicine to fix it. If I even have like an issue, you know? Um, so I made an appointment. So this encouraged me to make an appointment and I needed a wellness visit anyways. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't think that this is anything that is scary or I'm like super concerned about but I know like when I do want to have kids I'm definitely going to test again and they can like what they how it read is they can merge those results and kind of see how your body's been progressing and give you better insights on um, how to get pregnant because on the second area of this there's a well, I don't want to say second on one of the areas there is a plan section so there are different sections saying um, kind of like why are you doing this so on mine it was more so to just like see where my body is at like I'm not trying to get pregnant so like my plan is or phase as they call it so there's a learning about my fertility getting my body ready trying to conceive and navigating my first trimester um, I was in the learning about my fertility and getting my body ready phase. I am not in the trying to conceive and I'm definitely not in the first trimester phase. Um, and within each of those phases, there are just like so, so, so much literature to read on how to do it. And so, and it's cool because you can check it off. As you do the things, you do a little checkbox and then it gives you a percentage of um, how ready you are in that phase. So like in getting my body ready, I went through it and I am 47%. And that's a pretty good percent for not being ready to actually have a kid. So some of the things that I haven't done and I'm not checking off is um, scheduling a preconception, preconception appointment. I don't need that yet. Um, starting prenatals, don't need that yet. Although that's like something where you want to start a couple months beforehand. I've read a lot about that. Um, they actually sell prenatals and they are the, like the glass bottle is blue and it's just like beautiful. <laughs> And I'm someone that any kind of like branding or like cutesy marketing product like labels suck me in. So if I am trying to get pregnant in the future, I probably will end up buying those. They're only $30 a month. I just, I just really liked that. But no, I don't need them yet. So I'm not doing that. Um, and then it's, like doing genetic testing and addressing health concerns and planning for your insurance. And no, so I haven't done those things. So I don't need to. So basically that wraps up modern fertility. They do other like sell other things uh, like pregnancy tests and then ovulation tests. I think that their ovulation tests they're $16 for 20. It's a little expensive. You can get cheaper ones online. Um, that also is a good way to track your period, not even just for having kids. I used to do ovulation tests to track my period. At one point, when they weren't coming, I was considering going to the doctor, and then all of a sudden they showed up again. So um, I was trying to track if I even had, like, a LH surge. Is that even what it's called? It's been a while. And then they have pregnancy tests on there. There's four of them for 14 Again, that's a little expensive. You can get cheaper ones, but... Uh, 
to each their own if you want cutesy ones buy them um, i just think the the test itself like made me feel a little more empowered and um confident with my body because before i um, i honestly like expected worse results like i feel like my results were pretty dang good let me know in the comments below if you've done any fertility testing, if you've gone through your doctor, if you've gone through like an at-home test like this. I know regardless, they're kind of expensive no matter how, what route you do. I don't think this is something insurance will cover if you go to the doctor. Um, it was saying on the preconception visits, it doesn't usually uh, cover that. So just be prepared to pay out of pocket for any lab testing. So I'm happy with this. I... Um, we'll update you guys if I end up learning more about why my PRL is high, but I, I think ultimately I'm a very average 31 year old in reproduction, so I couldn't have asked for anything more. <laughs> um, elephant in the room, my hair is purple, yeah, that was not on purpose, so I'm hoping it washes out. This is day four of purple hair. It definitely has washed out a lot. It was about five shades darker. I kind of like this shade though. Let me know what you guys think. I don't mind the light lavender tips. And there's a little bit up here, but not as much. So I'm not like, I'm not mad at it, you know? Not mad at all. So yeah, I don't think I have any other updates for you guys. Other than my purple hair, which I waited this long to even talk about, but that's fine. I'm gonna go. I love you guys, and I will see you guys really soon in another video. Bye!